You are listening to an MLGA Network podcast. Cam, life is so different now. Everything just seems smaller. I've been waiting my whole life to feel this way. Do do I even want to know what you're talking about right now? We made it, Cam. We made it. Phil, it was it was one interview. We're not famous. We barely had any... We didn't even have very many more listeners than normal. I mean, literally no one knows who we are. And I don't know about you, but I'm not rich yet. Stop being so modest. Our stock, it's rising. And we're going to ride this wave all the way to the top. Are you delusional? I mean, I, I, I know you like to fool around. And, but at this moment, I... I am seriously worried about your state of mind. Cam. Well, Cameron. (sighs) Now's the time for rejoicing. All our hard work has finally paid off. You know we've talked about calling me that. Like, I don't let you have sex with me so you don't get to call me Cameron. Just, just so you know. Agree to disagree. (laughs) (laughs) And are you talking about the three months and, like, 14 shows that we've put out? Is that all the hard work you're referring to? Exactly. We're A-list podcasters now. We did it in record time. My charisma and good looks have carried us to where we're at now. I just, I don't know why you can't be more supportive and happy for us. I think you should be committed. I am committed. To you. Hard pass. Tell me you love me. No. Welcome to Make Liberty Great Again, the best damn liberty podcast that you've never heard of. Phil and I will be your guides as we peer into the ridiculous reality of our society and our government. Let's get to it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Make Liberty Great Again. Phil's lost his damn mind. I'm your host, Cam Harless, and with me as always is my super smart and super handsome co-host, Phil Alphonse Padilla. Just a couple of superstars bringing you the news. You're welcome, everybody. Just, could you not do that the whole episode? Typical statist, trying to control what people do. I'm not. It was just a soft suggestion, because honestly, you're weirding me out a little bit. Here's a suggestion. Instead of telling me what to do, why don't you tell the news? What do you have for us today? Uh, do you remember the uh, the viral story about the young Dutch girl who was euthanized by the state without parental consent? I definitely remember that story spreading like a forest fire. Well, apparently the corporate press got the story wrong. You know, that doesn't surprise me at this point. So if they got it wrong, please tell me what's the real scoop. Well, 17-year-old Noah Pethoven, if that's how you say that. Probably not. Uh, I'm not Dutch. She was, in fact, a victim of sexual abuse and suffered from mental health issues. However, her death did not come at the hands of a doctor. Noah did apply with a clinic for the Netherlands euthanasia process, but she was denied because she was too young. I believe a suggestion for more trauma treatment was actually made as well. So then how'd she actually die? Well, she she struggled with anorexia and depression. She refused to eat, drink water, or do anything to keep herself alive. People sure didn't pause for a second before insulting and shaming the parents on social media for letting her go through the state-approved process. Even though she didn't. Yep. You know, people really are very compassionate. It, it just, it warms my cold, dead heart to hear. Those same people probably don't care to know that the family tried several rounds of psychiatric treatment and Noah was hospitalized over and over. She had multiple suicide attempts. The family reportedly sought out electroshock therapy but they were refused because Noah was too young. So the parents eventually came to what I'm sure was a, was a heartbreaking decision to not force feed her. You know, it's a really sad story. And it's kind of insane to me that you can be approved by the state to be euthanized. I mean, I, when I think euthanasia, I think of animals that are in suffering, but I never really applied it to human beings. But I, I found a stat that's fairly recent. It's from 2016 that reported euthanasia accounted for about 4% of total deaths in the Netherlands. Now, I'm, I'm not for the state saying that people can or can't choose to end their own lives. I'm personally against offing yourself for the most part. I mean, one big problem with humanity at large 
is that they use the state as a means to suss out morality. It's an incredibly weird and stupid way to decide what's right or wrong. And, and that's why I hate the idea of New York publicly legalizing abortion up to birth, or you know, states criminalizing marijuana, or the state telling us that taxation isn't theft. And the state sanctioning and administering suicide, be it for, you know, mental or physical issues, gives rise to that being something that people decide is actually okay or even a good thing. Right. Now, if the state got out of the practice altogether and let individuals decide what they want to do without the state making the decisions for them... I'm a uh, proponent of the state getting out of the practice of killing humans, you know, altogether. Yep. And if one person dies, I'd like the press to actually tell the story correctly rather than being the enemy of humanity that they are and misreporting it like it's their job. It's funny that you mentioned misreporting because I have a story for you. Recently, it was reported that uh, Best Korea executed their special envoy to the United States by firing squad, of all things. His name is, I'm probably not saying this right, Kim Hyok Chol. <laughs> Allegedly, he was executed due to the failed Hanoi summit talks. Well, that seems excessive. It gets better. Sort of. The South, or worst Korean newspaper, Chosun Ilbo, probably not saying that right either, reported he was executed back in March on the charge that he was, quote, won over by the American imperialists to betray the supreme leader. You know, I can't actually imagine our diplomats being that charismatic. I mean, they're not you, Phil. Your goat drum right, they're not. I am charisma. Anyways, this is allegedly part of the, quote, big purge of officials that were executed back at uh, Miram Airport. So how did the failing media get this wrong? Well, several sources have reported that he's in custody and being investigated for the said, you know, failed role at the Hanoi summit. They've reported that one of Best Korea's senior officials, Kim Yong Chol, not to be confused with the guy with basically the same exact name, <laughs> was purged as well. But here's the twist. Best Korea state media reported that he attended an art performance with the Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un. So our media and worst Korea's media are both fake news? Or maybe all three of them are? You know, I feel like at this point I need photos or DNA evidence to trust anyone in this situation. I'm just going to assume that everyone has a stupid agenda. That's a pretty safe assumption, I'd say. And I know this is a short segment, but it's always fun to poke fun at the failing corporate press and, you know, have a little laugh at their expense. Plus, I know that you like to talk about Best Korea, and I just wanted to put a smile on that big bearded face of yours. Do you know what I'm tired of? The hostage population in Best Korea? The U.S.'s wars across the globe? People freaking out about abortion? People making fun of you for single-handedly trying to populate the earth? Not living near me? Statism? Nasty domestic beer? Women complaining about made-up rights that men have? Ryan Burgett? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but also libertarians talking about tariffs as though the president and most people don't think that they're a bad idea and harm people. Okay, I, I think my things were better, but that's fine. <laughs> But do, do you remember when Trump announced he'd place tariffs on Mexico if they didn't take care of, uh, of their immigration problems? Yeah, I believe you texted me a picture of his tweet. I did. Uh, it looks like his threat to use tariffs actually paid off for him. Uh, Mexico and the U.S. have come to an agreement to curb legal immigration. Oh, yeah? How's that working out? Well, Mexico has agreed to deploy their National Guard throughout the country to stop migrants from reaching the U.S. border. Those seeking asylum also have to wait in Mexico while their claims are heard and reviewed by the U.S. They also aim to crack down on human smuggling. So, I mean, I guess that's nice. You know, honestly, it's not surprising that this worked out. When you threaten 5% tariffs that may increase to 25%, for a country like Mexico, you know, that's no bueno. They, they simply wouldn't be able to outlast that or stand their ground long enough in order to buy time to try to renegotiate some sort of deal. Right, but the U.S. could absolutely outlast them when it comes to tariffs. Trump knew this, and he, he used it as a bargaining chip. He threatened them, and honestly, it, it seems like it worked. The timing is good for him, too, because it really seems like he needed a win. 
especially when it came to immigration running up to the 2020 election. I mean, that was his big issue in 2016, and if he had no wins on immigration, I mean, he would jeopardize the loyalty of some, if not most, of his troops. This is such a contentious issue that I'm sure it's going to score him some major points with his base and others who are concerned about immigration issues. You're probably right. And let's just pray this satisfies people long enough that they'll shut up about that wall. You know, I hope that libertarians who saw this story and decided to go on tangents about how tariffs are bad and how they will affect us and blah, 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 ad nauseum will just shut the fudge up. We know. Trump knows. That's why he used it as a threat. He knows they're harmful to the economy, and he only used them to make the Mexicans dance for him. Is it racist to make Mexicans dance? Everything is racist if you try hard and believe in yourself. Well, but you're right. Them going on and on about how bad tariffs are makes no sense when it comes to this story. It's like they're saying nothing, but just want to argue for argument's sake. The really interesting story that we should be talking about is that the sitting president of the United States sent out a tweet threatening economic hardship on another country if they didn't do what he wanted, and within a week or so, they caved. And they gave him what he wanted. Using social media to make other countries do what you want is pretty unprecedented. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fascinated by the whole situation. I feel like there's some part of me that has terror over that. But, uh, you know, we live in a world where status updates can dictate international politics. I hope he threatens to post pictures of Trudeau in a dress to have Canada build a wall. That'd be funny. <laughs> this was a very... Very public spectacle. I mean, it could be good for Trump, and honestly, I'll be interested to see how this how this pans out for him. It's going to be huge. But if I have a confession to make, why I'm most glad this didn't go into effect is because could you just imagine the autistic screeching that would come from liberals if prices of avocados went up and they had to actually pay more for avocado toast? I just, I shudder at the thought. <laughs> yeah. Thank God for that. Anyway, uh, has the U.S. killed uh, Julian Assange yet? Not yet, but it seems like that could happen any day now. I mean, honestly, that's been my worry since he was picked up. Will he even make it to the U.S. for his stupid charges? I mean, is someone going to just take him out before they can prosecute him for telling their evil secrets? Well, they haven't hanged him from the gallows just yet, but they might as well have. He was set to appear at his case management hearing via video link... And his lawyer said that he was actually in such poor health condition that he couldn't attend. Uh, apparently, he's lost a lot of weight. He couldn't make a court appearance via video because he was so ill? God, that that seems really bad. It does. You know, if they don't kill him with bullets, you know, they're sure as hell going to kill him slowly like they have been doing over the last few years. Well, I mean, for me, I'll be praying for the dude. He doesn't deserve any of that any bit of what he's gone through. I mean, it's a tragedy that someone that shared war crimes of others in an attempt to stop those things from happening would be treated so poorly in the name of the law. Fluff the state. Fluff these people who couldn't handle the truth. He needs to be set free immediately. I mean, I'm a capitalist. I, I, I've also given up mostly on the concept of voting. So at this point, I'm not against selling my vote. I have no moral qualms with that. So mark my words, if Trump pardons Assange and Ross Ulbricht, I'll take that as my fee. I'll vote for him, and I will, I'll make sure my wife does too. You know, I'll join you, but he has to stop a war to get my vote. Hey, that's your challenge, Trump. Be a fluffing man and earn our votes. Uh, shirt. He's not going to make that easy, though. Is he acting like a leftist again? When is he not? I mean, that's a, that's a good question. Thank you. What? I just, I was saying thank you. I like it when you're nice to me. Well, you're welcome. Uh, what leftism is he spouting now? That he's going to seriously consider banning silencers. Rant time. I hate that term, by the way. A suppressor doesn't silence anything. It's such a misnomer. When you shoot that round, it still makes a pretty good sound. It's just not as loud. That's all. It's just a little muffled. This is real life. It's not a movie for fork's sake. I just had to get that out of my system. Isn't it lovely how people who are so ignorant on this topic have all of the power to infringe on our rights? No. <laughs> 
but here's what Trump said about a week ago. He said, I'd like to think about it. I mean, nobody's talking about silencers very much. I did talk about the bump stock, and we had it banned, and we're looking at that. I'm going to seriously look at it. This is, of course, you know, a reactionary measure to the shooting at that Virginia Beach Municipal Center, where the gunman shot multiple people with legally bought pistols, and he had a suppressor. And, without skipping a beat, his base has already done their mental gymnastics to justify this. I've literally seen social media posts essentially saying that silencers are stupid and that the Second Amendment doesn't cover things that you add to a gun. Imagine being so retarded as to think that since the Second Amendment and the Bill of Restrictions doesn't mention silencers, the president can just ban them with his pen. I'd rather not imagine being that person. That's scary. <laughs> well, they, they also seem unwilling to recognize that he's openly restricted gun rights more than Obama. And remember how much fear people had about that? Hell yeah, I remember. I remember seeing posts and rhetoric about that literally probably almost every day during his presidency. It's one of many things that has frustrated me. What else has he said that's upset you recently? Well, he's supporting a bill to ban the burning of Lord Skycloth, the sacred fabric of the statists. Oh no, we can't let any damage come to the holy pole quilt. Trump actually tweeted that this bill is a, quote, no-brainer. The bill in question is being sponsored by Senator Steve Daines of Montana, Senator Kevin Kramer of North Dakota, and Representative Steve Womack of Arkansas. They're aiming for the Constitution to be amended so Congress has the authority to ban the, quote, desecration of the U.S. flag. These walnuts actually said, quote, adding a constitutional amendment to protect this symbol of freedom and liberty is not an attack on other constitutional amendments. Rather, it is an affirmation of the unifying principles our nation stands for. But isn't one of those principles freedom of speech and expression? I thought so. You'll love this. Senator Kramer actually said, A flag worth dying for is a flag worth protecting. Who the hell wants to die for a flag? I thought we were fighting for freedom and democracy. I think I'd rather die for a pair of heshy socks. Well, you forget, it's the freedoms that the government agrees with. The Supreme Court, you know, they've already ruled that the burning of the flag is a form of free speech protected by the First Amendment. And I really hope, if it goes to them again, that they uphold that ruling. You know, the absolute last thing we need is more people thrown into cages for victimless crimes. It literally, it's your property to do with what you will. Right. And, you know, if you if you wondered if the conservative minions had jumped on this or not, Candace Owens made a statement on Twitter about this. Would you like me to read it to you? She sucks, but go ahead. If I were president, the punishment for burning the U.S. flag would be renunciation of citizenship. No jail time, no fine, simply one year to liquidate your assets and get the hell out of our country. In exchange, we'd extend citizenship to a hardworking legal immigrant. Well, as I said, she's stupid. <laughs> I agree. It's a good thing that most of these conservative tits aren't actually in control of anything. She doubled down after some pushback. She said, quote, The First Amendment has limitations. You can't yell fire in a movie theater without consequence. You cannot yell racial epithets at someone without consequence. And if I were president, you sure as hell wouldn't burn a flag without consequence. I wonder if she realizes that the flag code says the best way to dispose of an old flag is to burn it. I doubt it. Also, let's say that someone burned an American flag. Who the hell is the president or Candace Owens to say where that person can live or work. Well, not to repeat myself too many times, but like I said, she's stupid, and most presidents are too. Well, I mean, that we can agree on. Uh, should we check in and see what Ben Shapiro said? Should we go get our prostates checked for fun? I'd rather not. Time to move on. Moving on. I hear that the Spanish blew up the USS Maine in Havana Harbor. No. Wait. That's not right. Yeah, yeah. It was the Gulf of Tonkin when the USS Maddox was attacked by the North Vietnamese. I, I think we're getting closer, but I don't think that's it. Oh, man. I just, I can't remember. Nope. That was it. Oh, man. The Gulf of Oman. Some Japanese and Norwegian oil tankers were blown up in the Gulf of Oman by thunderbolts from John Bolton's mustache. I mean, by Iran? Allegedly? Allegedly. The U.S has literally wasted no time in blaming Iran for attacks on two oil tankers. Tehran 
of course, has denied these accusations. Trump said, quote, Iran did do it, and you know they did it because you saw the boat. That's some damning evidence if I've ever heard it. He's, <laughs> uh, he's referring to a video that was released, which I guess showed Iran's revolutionary guards were behind the blast. The ships in question are the Norwegian-owned Front Altair and the Japanese-owned Kakuka Courageous. That's a, that's a good name, too. It's better than the best Korean backwater rally. B- barely. Let's not... <laughs> Let's not get into that. We'll fight We'll fight on that another day. But yeah, I'm absolutely convinced by the overwhelming evidence of they did it. Let's not forget about Pompeo swiftly stating, quote, These were attacked by the Islamic Republic of Iran on commercial shipping, on the freedom of navigation, with the clear intent to deny transit through the strait. He also said, The intelligence community has lots of data, lots of evidence. Believe me. The American people should rest assured that we have high confidence with respect to who conducted these attacks. Pardon me, but the last time these hacks tried to sell us a bill of goods based on unspoken evidence and intelligence community consensus was that Trump was a Russian agent. And, you know, how'd that turn out? So, excuse me for calling bull shark on anything these agents of the deep state have to say regarding foreign policy and the actions slash motivations of other countries. I mean, but even the basic information that they are giving is wrong. The Japanese owner of the tinker also directly contradicted the U.S. opinion of what happened. Our wonderful leaders claim that there was a mine placed or a torpedo shot by Iran to destroy the tankers. Yutaka Katata, the owner of the tanker, has pointed out the explosion and impact was above the waterline rather than below as the U.S. stated. Clearly, if there isn't even agreement on what actually happened, we shouldn't be listening to these dummies blame another country that both Israel and the U.S. just happened to like picking fights with and have wanted to for a long time. Exactly. It's it's suspiciously convenient that just mere hours after the incident, we have it all figured out. And But something else stinks, though. Japan has a good relationship with Iran. They are, they're a huge customer for Iran when it comes to oil. Japan's prime minister was even set to go there to have conversations with the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla in order to warm them up so that they could have conversations between the U.S. and Iran after Trump and the warmongers backed out of that deal. Why would Iran want to damage their relationship with Japan? Easy answer? I don't think they would. It this this reeks of a false flag operation and if we turn out if I turn out to be wrong down the road, I'll admit it, I'll eat my words, but that's just that's what I'm going with now. That's what my gut's telling me. I mean, I don't disagree. It it looks fishy as all hell. And you know, as we pointed out in the beginning, with the Gulf of Tonkin leading us to the war in Vietnam and the beginning of the Spanish-American War, There's a long history of the U.S. using trumped-up stories involving boats to start wars. And, you know, that's scary. Yeah, the government's penchant for lying us into wars is definitely scary. What's also scary, though, is just how the masses just gobble it up. No questions asked. America's got to do what America's got to do. I get kind of tired of that, if if I'm being quite honest. Yeah, it's just, it'd be nice for a change of just, hey, you know what? I'm going to think for myself, I'm not going to listen to this drivel that they're shoving down my face, and maybe have an independent thought. That'd be a nice change of pace. I don't think it's possible for people to have independent thoughts anymore, because they have tied themselves so far into these weak ideologies of left versus right, or Democrat versus Republican, or Israel versus the world, even. And I'm not an anti-Semite, but let's be real, that's that's a thing. And people aren't going to back off of that. Statism is a, it's a religion. I mean, what this is what happens when you worship the state. You can't question it in any way, shape, or form. That's heresy. Yeah, and it's that's one of those things that, personally, for me, it's unacceptable. That religion is unacceptable to me. I just, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, it's it's wearing me thin. I'm getting kind of sick of these antics myself. But that's the state that we're currently in. Yeah. Are you sad enough to end this episode yet, or uh, do you have something else? No, I'm good. I'll let me let me do the conclusion part. All right, folks. Thank you for having a bit of fun with us and joining us on this adventure into the madness that is our world. 
You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon at This Is MLGA. If you'd like to send us an email, you can reach us at This Is MLGA at gmail.com. I mean, at least until Ryan gets us a better looking email address. Yeah, Ryan. Just hit us up, subscribe, and make sure to rate us on iTunes. It helps us grow and guarantees new episodes. And never forget to check out the MLGA Network. We're a small and scrappy group of libertarians that share all of the best liberty podcasts on MLGANetwork.com. Make sure to check that out. Make sure to listen to Technoagorist. Make sure to listen to Voluntary Vixens. Make sure to listen to Thank You for Your Servers. (sighs) Am I missing any? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Morning Drive with David. And we're going to have even more original shows coming your way very soon. We're happy to be here. We're happier with us. Stay sane. Yeah.